What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Dirt X Show, hosted here on the Dirt Exhibition YouTube channel. I am Brendan, here with Rich. And uh, guys, we're talking New England UTV, everything off-road, and uh, yeah, just diving into it. Uh, so this is being filmed on Sunday morning. We're filming, banging out an episode of Dirt X Show, and then we're going to be working on the Ranger. Got a couple things coming up with that. Uh, but first, one of the things we want to talk about is... Um, something that we kind of want to get going on our TikTok, which is Polaris or Can-Am. And the reason why is because we want to let you guys, the viewers, potentially pick the next machine that we get here uh, at Dirt Exhibition. What Hell yeah. What do you think about that? So <clears throat> we decided that we actually, I don't know if you guys, if you guys follow us, you might have seen that the Turbo S went for sale, right? It's for sale right now, we're thinking about getting rid of it. And we're, it begs the question, like, what's going to be the next machine? Um, obviously, you guys know we're huge fans of the Pro-R, but we also like to go fast. A lot of guys say that um, that new X3 is the way to go. So, again, Polaris versus Can-Am. You guys let us know what you think down in the comments. And um, we're going to come up with a poll, and we're going to let you guys pick the next machine. Yeah. Right? Yep. And I hope so. you guys pick the Pro-R because I really <laughs> – I think yes, that I would yes. have to eat so much shit if I freaking showed up in a Can-Am, but – Yeah. So, any machine, Polaris or Can-Am, let us know. Drop it in the comments. And, um, you know, you can you can tell us why one sucks, why one is better. You can drop a funny comment. Um, I was even thinking maybe we might be able we might pick like the best comment or whatever and might, you know, send some swag their way or whatever. But uh, we're going to have some fun with it, guys. So uh, we're ready for the, you know, the the battle that's going to happen. That's going to happen in the comments section. Not, not going to be much of a battle, dude. And uh, well, well, I don't know. We'll see. The tur the uh, freaking uh, turboed pro R, dude. Yeah, but can can am dudes? Are, I don't know. Can am dudes or can am dudes, and we might we might become one. <laughs> so I hope not, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see what they say. So we'll figure it out, guys. Yeah, like I said, that's gonna be coming soon, and um and yeah. So let us know in the comments yeah. what you guys think. Well, like so, you were talking about you know gonna be working on the Ranger a little bit today. We have um, a street legal kit from WD Electronics. Yep. Um, essentially, it's just horn, uh, turn signals, things like that. They got a really nice kit. Um, I forget we had installed um, we installed a different brand on the Turbo S. I forget which one it was, but uh, the nice thing and the reason we went with WD Electronics on this one was, or the, one of the reasons was the the little uh, the little lever that yeah. mounts to the column mm -hmm. for your turn signal. You know, I like that better than the rocker switch, to be honest. Yep. You know, so I've in the Turbo S got a rocker switch. I click it on. Sometimes I forget to shut it off. It, I think it shuts off after like 30 seconds. But so we're working on that a little bit. We're also still messing with the electrical for the plow on the Ranger. Um, we haven't really got a whole lot of snow up here in New England, so we haven't really needed the plow yet. So because of that, it's kind of been back burner. It's been sitting out back. Um, we we're kind of waiting to do the street legal kit and the plow wiring at the same time, because obviously if we're going to stop pulling panels out of those things, um, any of you guys that ever pulled panels out of your Ranger know that it's kind of a pain in the ass. So we figured we'll wait till the the turn signal kit's here. We'll do it all at once when we have everything apart. So And that's going to be one badass machine. Yeah. I mean, the dude, the Ranger lifted, 35s, the plow. I mean, that plow's a nasty plow anyways. I know. Uh, so I can't wait. I think we're going to try and make that like a standalone video uh, for the YouTube channel. And uh, just to give you guys an overall view of what it's like. And um, like I said, I mean, in terms of utility machine, that's like been able to plow, but also able to have some fun. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be nasty. It's going to be wild. So. I mean, these guys have seen the YouTube videos. Like we, yeah. we drive the wheels off that Ranger. Yeah. Like that high lifter, six inch lift kit, the it's way we have it set up with those zero shocks. I mean, we hang with all the razors, yep. you know? I mean, obviously I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it's just as fast as my Turbo S, but... <laughs> nope. It holds its own for being such a big, huge family machine. Yeah. Um, and if anyone, in case anyone didn't see, we did end up going with the Fisher Trail Boss V Plow for the Ranger. Um, it comes, it's initially, or, or the, the plow itself is six feet, but we got the wing extensions that add another foot. So this thing's seven feet wide, which we need because obviously the range is a pretty big machine. It's pretty wide with that six inch kit on it. So I mean, do we really need it though? Because we haven't gotten any snow yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't get me going. So, we haven't got any snow. Yesterday was actually the coldest day that we've had in New England in a long time. It was negative like, six. Yeah, negative nine at my house, and then yeah. the wind chill is like negative 20-something, negative yep. 30. And it was actually the coldest recorded temperature at the top of Mount Washington. 
Oh yeah. Uh, ever. Well, actually, no. The, yeah, the the coldest recorded temperature in U.S. history was at the top of Mount Washington yesterday. Oh, yeah. the day before. Yeah, yesterday. Couple, the day be- I forget. Day before anyway, that, it was negative one hundred and. It was one hundred and four. I saw. It was like broke the record, and yeah. I think it peaked at like negative one hundred and eight. Yeah. Wow. So negative one hundred and eight degrees. What happens with you have when you have bare skin exposed at negative one hundred and eight? Like, if you just stick your face out the door to check on it, like, do you, does your face know. get burned? I don't want to find out. Like it has to, dude. Think it about has it. To. I mean, frostbite when it's uh, like zero degrees happens in like five minutes. Yeah. So when it's negative 108, like think about how hot it is in Florida on the hottest day. Yeah. That's it's like 110 degrees. Yep. It was 110 degrees below zero. Like think about that. That's wild. So. But anyway, right. you're not running any side by sides up there. That's no. that's for sure. No. But guys, uh, moving on. So New England UTV Rally Experience 2023. If you haven't seen it. Uh, you guys have to check out our New England UTV rally experience from 2022. Uh, we, uh, along with the Larkin Motors Foundation, took up some uh, some participants to uh, to New Hampshire for an all out all day rip through the New Hampshire trail systems in our machines and uh, some other machines, including the one that we gave away um, through the Larkin Motors Foundation. And uh, what a nasty experience that was in 2022 and guys we're going to be bringing it back in 2023 uh so we're still actually working out the details right we're, it, we're still early on it's february now so we're still kind of uh, ironing out those details and when it's going to happen and you know how many people and and you know we might make some adjustments to uh to kind of the format of how we did things um but nonetheless we're bringing it back yeah so, so la- last year guys when we did it um we were up there it was essentially a one-day event riding most of the guys showed up the night before we hung out got dinner together um and we woke up in the morning, and we we went on an all day rip. So these the, the guys that came up with us were guys that have never been in a side by side before. Like you know, they've seen them, they have friends that have them, whatever, but they've never been up into the trails. They've never really been on a serious riding experience. It, yeah, and that was kind of the reason why we wanted to do it. We wanted to find people that have never been in it but want to participate in something like that. They, you know, because. You know as well as I do, like anybody can go up there and rent a machine, yep. right? Anybody can go get one of the, you know, one of the freaking three, four hundred rentals that are up there, and uh, and they can go ride Jericho, and you know, and you know, they might have a little bit of fun, but there's nothing like being in one of our machines mm-hmm. uh, with people that know where they're going, know you know how to go certain places, know how to ride, um, and you're just you're you're also uh, you know part of the experience is. Um, our experience, if that makes any sense, right? Yeah. So so you want to go with people who have experience that know where they're going and, and what they're doing. It can be intimidating. Like if you've, exactly. like, we know a lot of guys that ride quads and dirt bikes around here and they're thinking about getting into a side-by-side. And like when you go up there to rent, there's just so much up there. They do a really good job with the trail maps. Um, you know, Polaris actually has an app on your phone, the Polaris Ride Command app. Yep. Um, great app, shows you the majority of the trails that are up there, minus a few changes that happen, you know, year to year. But um, it can be intimidating. Yeah. You know, you get in the machine, you rent it, it costs you a bunch of money, you're like, where the hell do I go? You, you're getting, not lost, but you get turned around. It's it's a lot of work. Yep. So the cool thing about the experience is you get the opportunity to go up there, like you said, not in a rental machine, but in a highly modified machine. Um, these guys rode as a passenger for some of the time, and then we switched off, and they got to actually drive our machines. Um and the funny thing is, too, is some people didn't like after just being in the sat- passenger seat. Some people didn't even want to drive. Yeah, they were like, "No, some, this is really fun. I'm yeah, good. this is like being in a roller coaster, and I just want to sit back and enjoy the ride." So, yeah, but there's cool. no, there's no track. There's That's no tra- the thing that people don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this train can't come off the tracks. Yep. This is like, yep. it's like a suggested pathway. That's what it is. Just yep. the dirt. But it's a really good time, guys. I mean, the guys that went up there. Um, they did a little testimonial at the end of one of our YouTube videos. They just talked about what it meant to them, and uh, they really enjoyed it. You know, I mean, it cost you a little bit of money. So. A little bit more than what it would have cost to rent a machine. Yeah, exactly. So if you go up there and you look at a one-day rental on a machine, you know, you're spending probably one and a half times what it would cost you to rent a machine. Yep. And uh, to some people, that, you know, that's that's not worth it. They say, oh, well, you know something, I'd like to rent a machine. Okay, rent a machine. But for the people that that I've never done it before and that want to really go on a, on a freaking full day experience, like you said, where you can actually show them on the map, hey, we're starting here, we're going here, we're going to have lunch over here, we're making this big loop. That kind of helps open up your eyes to yeah. what is up here and, and what all this shit means. You know, you're not just looking yep. at lines on a piece of paper. You kind of get a feel for everything. Um, and if you're thinking about buying a side-by-side, 
Um, it'd be a really good opportunity to go up there, see everything, see if it's something that you like, which there's, there's no way you sit in one of these machines and go for a ride all day and don't want, want yeah, to buy one. Exactly. Like it's, we, we have that, we have that habit. We do that to our, to our friends, you know? <laughs> yeah. We, we described it as a bucket list experience and that was kind of what we wanted to do was for somebody who maybe not want to buy a machine or rent a machine, but they want that, you know, that bucket list experience of like, Hey, you know what? I want to go up to New Hampshire. I want to see some of the best trails or, or the best views and that New England has to offer. I mean, look at th this picture. That's from one of the trails that we were on. Um, and uh, I mean, amazing views, ripping down those trails. It was, it, th that's the bucket list experience that we wanted to give, a, give uh, you know, the participants or the people that came along with us. And so I think we, we really did a good job with that in 2022 and we're going to be bringing it back in 23 and probably making it, like I said, we're making a few adjustments, but we're going to be making it way better. Um, and it's, it's exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. So that's yeah. just one of the things, yeah, that we're going to be offering. But, um, yeah, the bucket list experience for sure. That's, that, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah. Last year, guys, um, when we did this, we t teamed up with the Lock and Motors Foundation and, you know, guys spent a little bit of money to go on this trip, but it all went to the Lock and Motors yeah, Foundation. It was, and there all were went, donations. Do, it was a donation to charity. Yep. So, you know, it's not, so you get, one, you get the hell of an experience that you would not get anywhere else. I promise you that there's nowhere else in New England where you're going to get to go on a ride like this. Um, and the money's going to charity, so. And you're riding with us. Yeah, that's kind of cool, I guess. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> Depends what kind of music <laughs> yeah, yeah, you like. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, so, and we have fun. We have fun when we ride, and so uh, that's part of the experience as well. Is Do you have any along. pictures or anything? Yeah, let's, uh, I have some right here. We're going to scroll through and take a look at some uh, uh, other way. So this is one, guys. <laughs> this is one picture from the crew. Uh, maybe I'll zoom in. Boom. Look at that, huh? Yeah, so that machine right there, guys, the Lock and Motors Raffle uh, Razor. I don't know if you guys recognize that one. That was a Pro XP that we had built. Um, we built it with the Lock and Motors Foundation. We actually raffled it off, and somebody up in New Hampshire won that machine. Yep. So if you guys are out on the trails up there in New Hampshire, you might come across this machine. Um, and it was, a, it was a variety. And that's the cool thing, too, is that while we were riding through the trails, uh, every, I don't know, I can't, I mean, 20 minutes to a half hour, we would rotate. So people would get uh, the experience in being every other machine. So we have the Pro XP, the, we have the Turbo S, we have the, um, the, the Turbo there. Um, uh, was that the Ranger, dude. Everybody the loved Ranger. the Ranger. People loved the Ranger. Everybody wanted to ride in the Ranger. It was yeah. crazy. Like... So you got to ride in every experience. And then the Ranger was kind of like the support vehicle, but people loved it. Yeah. So that was just the cool format that we had. We had a total of uh, four machines and then the Ranger following as a support vehicle with food, drinks, tools, um, and which we did end up needing uh, along the way or in, during the ride. But it was just such a cool experience. Um, you know, we would stop for breaks. Like I said, everybody would be talking, hanging out, having fun, talking about machines. Yeah, you can kind of see the cooler on the back of the Ranger there, the white Yeti. There's a ranger again. And again, guys, talk about, you can't really see the views here, but I mean, I mean, you're in the middle of the trails. You're in the middle of New Hampshire. I mean, the mountains are everywhere. It's just so much fun. So this was a good day for us. I know that it's a little foggy. Yeah. Um, I think we got a little bit of rain early on and that really helped keep the dust down on the trails, guys, because that's something that is, I don't want to say an issue, but that's something that you got to deal with. Like if you go out on a really hot day, yep. it's going to get dusty guys. You know, you're going to want to have a windshield. You're going to want to have a face mask, you know, a little bandana or something just to help knock the dust down. But this was a great day. I, I I'll t I take an overcast day with a little bit of rain any day of the week. Absolutely. No, a lot of fun. Um, next one. Oh, let's see. So these are the four machines that we had lined up, guys. So again, um, you this know. is this was us up at um, up in Errol. We stopped to get lunch in Errol. Yep. We pulled in the back parking lot there. So what's the what's the name of that that place again? Um, LL Coat. LL Coat. LL yeah. Coat. Yep. So the I little. mean, if you guys are from New England and you ride the area, you're gonna know that place. Uh, one of the best places to stop. It's like a Bass Pro Shop, you know. It's but a little, little bit more of a mom and pop vibe. They got all kinds of stuff in there, all kinds of sporting goods. Um, Sell they sell firearms, they sell ammo, they sell bait, tackle. All the essentials. <laughs> and and chicken, fried chicken. They have their own little and their own little food station. But. Absolutely. Yeah, but but that was it, guys. These are the four machines that guys got to ride in and uh and rip through the trails. Yeah, they got to ride in and drive, like I said. Yep. Really uh yeah, good stuff. Next one. Uh oh. So remember, remember when I just said we needed the tools, this was one of those times. Um so Rich got a flat on the Turbo S. And yeah, it's always that that the passenger side rear every time. 
That's always the one that goes flat. Yeah. So this is funny, guys. We had the whole crew together, and um, you know, there was actually the guy. He's in the picture right there, in that uh, that machine. What is that? Uh, dude, I don't even know. What I don't that even thing know what is. that is. A Razor nine hundred or something. Not, uh, but he was like. He's like, oh, hey, uh, you need a jack? I was like, does it look like we need a yeah, jack? Yeah, no, we're a NASCAR prick crew. We, we, you know, we put that thing up on the side. And, and just so you're watching, if you've never changed a tire this way, we're not, we're not holding it up. It's, it's balancing. The machine's balancing. Um, so we're just... We're it's kind of like when you do a wheelie on a dirt bike and you get to like that, that, that sweet spot yeah. that's where, where the bike just kind of floats. And we, and, yeah, and we swap those tires fast, so... That's kind of what it was like, you know, get quick the whole and, crew involved. Quick and dirty. Yeah, yeah, get the whole crew involved, get everybody going, change that tire, get back on the trail, and uh, and keep it going. So, and I mean, as you can see, nothing but smiles right there. So. If you if you got a lot of guys with you, it's real easy to do this. It's yep. real easy to pop the machine up on the side. Um, sounds crazy, looks crazy, but it's it's much faster than trying to do it any other way. Yep. Um, if you got less guys, but you have somebody that has a winch, some of you guys may have seen this. You can park the you know machine nose in up against the side, like you're almost going to T-bone the razor that has a flat tire. You run the winch cable over the roof to the other side of the cage, and as you winch in, it'll kind of pick those yep. pick one side of the machine up off the ground. So, yep, which is totally another option. Yeah, I mean, and that's you know, I mean, real couple quick ways to to change a tire. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you can do that. You can you can do it this way. You can use the winch. Uh, you had one time where you where you kind of drove up on a hill and exposed that. Oh my god, that. that was a disaster. Yep. So we were at a big event, and um, I I had COVID, guys. Like yeah. I was down and out for days. We we had a whole. It was like a seven day trip planned. I was on the couch for like the first five days. Finally. It was like day day six, and I'm like, you know something? Everybody was going on a big ride. You had already left. Yep. You guys went riding, and I woke up late, and I'm like, man, I got, I got to try to get out there. So I was riding, hammering down. Uh, it was just, I think it was me and Kayla, and I ended up freaking, uh, I caught some, I caught a rock, blew the tire, and I was by myself, um, no jack or anything. So yeah, I literally just found a good spot, found a stump where I was actually able to pull the machine up and kind of just roll it, to, I don't want to say roll it over, but. Um, you gotta get creative, you know, yeah. if you get it and that's, it sucks when it's a rear, if it's a front, you can usually nose up to something, to a tree, climb up the tree, tie the winch cable and pick the front of the machine up off the ground. Yep. But, um, yeah, there's a couple different ways you can do it. We so, talked before, uh, before the show, um, but super surprising the axles and the Turbo S. Yeah. So the Turbo S guys has 3,200 hard miles on it. Hard miles. Big turbo, big tune. Um, 3,200 hard miles on it, still on the factory axles. Yeah. Which is insane. Abs like, I, I had a Razor Turbo before this, and I would blow axles. I'd go through four of them in a season. You know, one day one would blow, you change it, the one on the opposite side would blow. Um, this machine, guys, I'm still, I mean, I'm still convinced. I haven't been in a Pro R, but the Turbo S is one of the best built machines to date in history from Polaris, the engineering, the dynamics, the, <clears throat> just the, the geometry in the suspension. This is one of the best built machines in my opinion from the factory. Yeah. You know, obviously other machines, you start getting an aftermarket shit. Um, <clears throat> you can see all, all the suspension components are, uh, are stock here. Yep. You know, I think we might've upgraded springs, but I mean, look like your, um, the trailing, ro trailing arms, the radius rods, everything, that's all stock stuff. So great machine. For sale. <laughs> hard? No, those hard miles. No, no, no. They weren't hard miles. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the one that we gave away. That's our buddy Justin up there. Justin came along. Um, good friend of ours. Uh, also a co-host on the Project Legacy podcast that we do uh, outside of Dirt X. And, uh, and that dude, that dude's Dave. Shout out to Dave. Dave came along for the ride. Um, and he had a lot of fun. So, yeah. Good um, good experience. I kind of missed that machine. That was fast. I will say that. That was one of the fastest machines, uh, you know, that we've uh, that we've built. That was the Pro XP with the uh, the Evo kit on it. Yeah, the whole Evo kit. Kind of every everything from the Evo catalog went into that machine. So yeah. that was a lot of fun. Um, and also in that event, that was our first time working with Truman Forbes. Uh, guys, Truman was our media guy that came along for that um, that day, and he was. It was actually the first time we worked with the FPV drone. That yep. was like that, you know, and, and he was like, it, can you it, tell everybody what an FPV drone is? Cause yeah, if so, I didn't see it, I wouldn't know. So you can have obviously your normal drones that, you know, um, 
that you like your Mavericks and whatnot that, you know, you have the Maverick. And, and so, you know, normal drones that go slow, you know, um, I don't know. What's the fastest that the, that yours goes? Maybe like 30 ish. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like 30, but it's, you, you're, you're really working at 30 miles an hour, you know? Yeah. So the FPV, uh, drones are the ones that are like, it's like a video game. Like you have a headset and, and you're, and you're seeing where it's going and they go like, I think it's like, I don't know, 60, 70 miles an hour or something like that. And they whip. And then you're basically, they're the ones that go up and down, left and right and all over the place. And they're actually using them like on track. And so they're following machines. Anytime you see, you know, a, a drone that's going fast following, uh, you know, in any kind of, you know, dirt bike videos, ATV videos, anything like that, racing and whatnot, uh, they're typically ate up by the FPV drones. And that was our first time filming with him. And he has amazing shots in that video from the experience. Yeah. Um, and so I, I loved it. I'm like, yeah, we're, we're going to have him go. I think we um, we have a West Virginia trip planned. May? Yeah, uh, May? May, the weekend of May 5th. Yep, going to Hatfield and McCoy's. Cinco de Mayo. Hatfields or Hatfield? I don't know. Hatfields? I say Polaris, in so I mean, <laughs> you, can't, you can't ask me because they're going to be like, oh, this guy, fucking Boston guy. Uh, Hatfields and McCoy's. Yeah, we're gonna go down there. We're gonna go rip West Virginia. We had. A I've whole been down there one time before. There. You never been down there nope, before, never right? Never been down there, so, so I'm excited. It's gonna all, be. Yeah, of all the places yeah. I've ever ridden, dude, West Virginia, Hatfield, McCoy's, my like. And the Outlaw Trails down there. Yep. Those are the best trails I've ever ridden. I mean, there's just such a variety. You know, like sometimes you ride up in New Hampshire and you can see from this photo, you got a lot of fire roads, you know, good for high speed stuff. Yeah. Like 20, 25 miles an hour. <laughs> um, but, but it's kind of, you know, th there's not a whole lot of technical stuff. In West Virginia, they have fire roads. You have a lot of technical trails, a lot of... Uh, rocky stuff yep. like it's just there's like you you literally get all the riding that you would want you know minus sand dunes when yeah. you go to west virginia so. so the good news is truman's on board and he's gonna be coming with us is he yes says who says him <laughs> you invited him <laughs> yeah jesus christ <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> no, but it's it's okay. It's everything's cleared. Everything's good. Truman's gonna be filming our experience in West Virginia. He's coming along for the ride. Or at least he said he is. Truman, don't don't back out. Dude. Anybody dude, he'll go anywhere now. He'll Once be, he went yeah. on that one ride, dude, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like anybody any of those guys, we can yep. call anybody right now. Hey, do you want to go do this? Yep. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. They'd so, be all over it. Yeah, so so Truman's gonna be coming with us. So guys, uh stick to the channel. Uh, follow the channel because in around May when that video comes out, that's going to be some of the nastiest riding you have seen coming out of West Virginia. Again, with him and his talents and skill when it comes to filming and, and us and our recklessness and riding and with the crew that we're going to be with, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. So that's going to be a great video. coming. It's going to be a busy spring, dude. It's it going to be a busy couple months. We yep. have what is, we're in February already, right? Yes, we are. So, uh, spoiler alert. Next month's my bachelor party, Whoa. and also and also my wedding. Whoa. We got all the guys coming. We're all going down to Miami. We're gonna be taking the new Fountain Thirty Eight SC out. So yes, a um, little different, a little bit of action on the water. Not a whole lot of dirt. Maybe we can call it like washing the dirt off or something. Maybe. But uh, we we may or may not have acquired the world's fastest production center console. So keep your eyes open. You'll see some stuff. But we got the bachelor party. We're gonna be going down to Miami on the boat. Um, the bachelor party with potentially the world's fastest <laughs> center console boat well, production. It, it is the world's fastest production center yeah, console, yeah. but potentially it'll be there. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah potentially yeah. it'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys know that we like to go fast. We yeah. already have the world's fastest production pickup truck. <laughs> and what what else? You know, the, what, the only, what's better than the world's fastest production gasoline pickup truck? Yeah, the world's fastest gasoline powered uh, production center console. So yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. But, yeah, busy, busy. Like I said, we got that. I'm going on a cruise. I actually just got back from Punta Cana. My, my first time leaving the country. Mm. Um, everyone's like, "Oh, you got to go ride four wheels." I'm like, "I'm all set." Yeah, I'm all set. Yeah. I don't want to. I, I don't want to ride some Hinsu 620 or something, some weird ass machine. <laughs> <laughs> Get stuck on the side of the road. We yeah. actually, I don't know if you guys uh, watched the Project Legacy podcast, but we talked about Punta Cana with Justin. Yes. Because Justin and Cat did the four wheeler rental. Yep. And Cat sent the four wheeler right off the. Uh, like off the cliff or whatever, the thing was like totaled. Get and, insurance, guys. Well, that's the thing is the guy ran over and the first thing he did was he was looking for the wristband. He's like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You guys have the insurance. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> if you go on vacation, you ride anything, get insurance. It's worth it, uh, especially if you've never done it before. Yeah, so Punta Cana in January, mm -hmm. um, Miami in March for the, the bachelor party and the wedding. Yep. I'm going on a cruise shortly thereafter that. We're going all over. I don't even know. I don't pay yep. attention to that kind of stuff. And then and then the typical side by side events in the next season, you know. Yep. April will be like Journey to Jericho. Yeah, April's like the rain season, you mm -hmm. know, April, May. 
Um, May, beginning of May, we'll be down at West Virginia, Hatfield McCoys, and then we'll be coming back up here. And it'll be time to get into the season up here. Yeah. You know, so you're probably looking at the, the next um, UTV rally experience being somewhere around, you know, the June mark. Yep. So keep your eyes open, guys. Absolutely. So, guys, uh, yeah, I mean, we let's cut this. Let's put a bow on this thing because we have some Ranger stuff to do. we got to get that wrapped up. Uh, like I said, stay tuned for that YouTube video coming out on the channel. We'll be filming that. And, uh, guys, again, if this is your first time watching, uh, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. It'll help us out a lot. Drop us a comment. Let us know what you guys want to see here on the Dirt X Show. Again, we've got giveaways coming, uh, big things in the works. So Giveaways um, and guests. Giveaways and guests. So, so if you or somebody that you know would like to be a guest here on the show, yep. tell them how they can get a hold of us and what they should do. Yeah, so you can hit us up at dirtexhibition at gmail.com or on social media, any of our social media platforms. Guys, we're on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, now we're on TikTok. Uh, yeah, so. go over to the TikTok too. If you guys haven't seen TikTok, go over there for us. Show us some love, you know. Yep, we've got Leave some good like, stuff there. Follow we're, us over there. We're hip with the kids these days on the Try, TikTok machine. Trying to be. In the <laughs> trying to be. And yeah, that's it. So let's get some stuff wrapped up. All right. All right, let's go. Let it.